Looks like Cody's bad behavior has landed him in the pound for the last time, but our pet trainer 911 is on the case. Are you planning a luxurious leisure getaway? Why not bring your furry friend with you and learn some cool tips to keep your pets safe from those harmful summer heat waves? Plus, a real rags to riches story from unwanted pound puppy to champion frisbee dog. All that and more on Animal Attractions. Welcome to Animal Attractions, the show about the deep affection people have for their pets. I'm Megan Blake, and this is Zulu. And I'm Alex Boylan. Have you considered vacationing with your pet, but aren't sure if it's right for you? Today, we have some insights to help you decide. Plus, did you know pets can get heat stroke? Veterinarian Jenna Kastner is here with some very important life-saving tips. But first, being an escape artist can be a worthy career. But for this dog, it's the end of the line. And time for our pet trainer, 911. Cody's been in and out of trouble most of his life. Not because he's mean or vicious. He's an escape artist and a repeated runaway. He keeps landing in the pound, waiting for yet another new home, and now has been labeled as hopeless. This is his final chance. Is it Cody? What are you doing in here? I'm a volunteer with Labrador Rescue, and unfortunately there has to be a need for a rescue of labs and many other different breeds. With Labradors, they're unfortunately overbred. They're extremely popular. The breed does have needs, they are potentially high energy, they love to be around their family. And so what happens is, over time, things can happen. That Christmas puppy, seven, eight months later, is high energy, with no training, is destructive. A dog has medical issues, perhaps the family doesn't want to deal with, moving, divorce. And so the dogs end up in shelters or they contact us directly, and they come into foster care. What we then try to do is find these dogs forever homes. When I tell people I'm a volunteer for Labrador Rescue, they think I train labs to do rescue in, say, fire or, you know, a bad situation. But unfortunately, I'm a volunteer rescuing labs from a homeless situation, often in shelters where they're actually in danger of being euthanized. And we bring them into foster care and then work towards finding them a new home. But with Cody, I couldn't quickly get him adopted. We realised when we brought him home Cody, that we obviously had some here. behavioural issues with him. He just Cody. wasn't going to listen to me. So the chances of him actually getting adopted were pretty slim. Come here, Cody. We'd found out from the folks at the shelter that Cody had actually been adopted a couple of times and returned. He was pretty much a street dog. And he basically had no interest in listening to his owners. So we'd hoped that with some basic obedience in foster care that we'd be able to turn him around. But that just wasn't the case. So we realised pretty quickly that we needed to call in Coach White. Well, that rescue had called me and told me uh, uh, they had a dog that would jump the fence and escape. And his name was Cody. And that they couldn't do nothing with him. He gets loose. He roams the street. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Thanks for coming out. You're welcome. I need your help. Let me tell you about one of my foster dogs. His name's Cody, and he's just not responding to any of the behavioral stuff that I'm trying to do with him. He doesn't listen to me. He has just no eye contact, jumps the fence, just keeps going, and just will have nothing to do with me trying to work with him. Okay, do you have that list that yeah. you can make out? I wrote down a list of kind of all the issues I'm having with him. Do you think you can help me? Oh yeah, we can do something with him. All right. Can we see him? Yeah, let's go see him. Okay. This is Cody. Hey, boy. I knew he was a street dog. And most people don't know how to deal with a street dog. They think they, they leave so much at either home, he couldn't be done, done with him. So I knew that I could do something with him, and I knew that this was going to be this dog's last chance right here. Come on, buddy. Come on, you done made it to boot camp. 
You here now, buddy. When I got Cody back to boot camp, I knew I had to keep him on a leash because he liked jumping the fence. And now if I put him outside on a leash, he would take and uh, pull out the collar or the choke chain. He would just pull right out as soon as I went in the house. And then when I tried to put him in his crate, he grabbed the leash and was struggling with me, telling me he wasn't going in there. So I knew that I had a challenge on my hand right off the top. The first thing I had to do when he come to boot camp, and I knew I had to watch him from jumping uh, and get him to look at me. So I had to take and put him on a, a food schedule where he couldn't eat any time he wants to. I needed him to be hungry to look at me. So I would take the treat and put it right in front of my face and then I would give it to him. And that made him start looking at me. Now that he's listened to me and looking at me, now I can take him through his training. And so what I would do, I'd put him on a long lead and he would go one way and I would go the other way. And I would pull him and tell him to come here, let him know I'm the leader and he has to follow me around. And once he was doing all that, I can take him through other parts of the training. Now that you know what come here means, you don't need this leash. Come here. The dog wouldn't sit, he wouldn't down, he wouldn't stay, and he also wouldn't come when you called him. So everything was a challenge from sitting, making him sit, making him down, making him stay. Good boy. So I, I took my time with him and uh, worked with him, and uh, now he knows what to do. Stay. Come here. He wanted somebody to tell him what to do. His dogs want you to tell him what to do. The dog didn't have any love, any structure. That's why he would leave the home that they gave him to. Down, stay. Come here. Time out. Time out. Time out. Stay. Come here. Good boy. I knew he was ready when he was listening to me, when he would follow me around in the house, everywhere. And then he would follow me around outside. So I knew he was ready to find a home. Cody had been a runaway dog, been rescued, but never been trained. But then once you, we trained him, uh, and he he's follows you around everywhere, now when he finds that home, he's going to stay there. He'll be there until the end. Because uh, they're trained, the dog is trained, the dog has found a home. One of the things we wanted to do was get a rescue dog, and particularly from, from lab rescue. We've just always loved that breed. Um, we know that they're, they're smart, they're trainable, they're, they're fun to be around, they're energetic, uh, and they're good with family, they're good with kids. What we did was we applied uh, online to be adoptive parents, and then someone from lab rescue came to our home, and they just really want to make sure it's a, a good, safe home, that one of their labs will be a good fit for our family. They just help guide you in choosing the right dog for you. And then once we were approved, it was just a matter of waiting for Cody. So he came along. Mom, Dad, Coach is here with Cody. Oh, oh let him in. Oh, let him in. I heard he was quite the escape artist. He could get out of just about anything, anywhere, at any time. <laughs> <laughs> and he had very selective hearing. He would listen to commands if they were convenient for him. And I think Coach had uh, changed that quite a bit. Mama White. It's great to see you. I'm Lauren. Yeah, nice Mama White. Cody. Hi. Oh, this is Cody. Oh, my Hi. Cody. Hey. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, he likes you. Yeah. Look at that. Come here. I thought he was the most perfect dog I was ever going to get. He was wonderful, sweet, all wiggly, wagging his tail. He was so just cute. Yeah, I think when I met Cody, I pretty quickly realized he was probably going to be the right dog for us. So I had to take the dog to the family to show them how to keep him trained. So I showed them how to use the food to let the dog look at them in the face, use the long leash on them to show them how to go back and forth and to call the dog, and how to keep the dog trained. Keep him trained, it'll bond with them, put the dog on a schedule, food schedule, don't let him get the food anytime he wants to, and uh, take him through their training. It took a few days uh, for us to be ready and then once we were, uh, Ron brought him to our home and it was just a wonderful time. It, it is a lot of work and it will be something that we will need to be committed to, to following through with Cody and Ron is always going to be there for us. 
and we work with each one of the family members, the husband and wife and their daughter, uh, for the dog will recognize their voice and I can get my voice out of it because they are the new owners of the dog. Cody was doing better than I was at the training sessions. <laughs> but Ron was very patient and very good with all of us. And uh, I was a little hesitant, but he's, he's an awesome dog and he's doing so well. I think that's what makes it easy for us. I don't think these dogs are broken. They just, they've been abandoned usually. And they just need, I wanna see them get a new home, a forever home. Um, I heard that Cody had escaped from anything, did not listen at all unless he wanted to. And once I saw him when he was trained, he was totally out of that stage and he was very well behaved. Um, right, yeah, Coach did say that uh, although the dog's trained, It'll take a little while for the training to sink in with us, and we need to let Cody do that, and, and we need to keep doing what he's been doing. Well, once I was working with the owners with the dog, I knew once the dog started listening to all three of them, I knew that my job was done. It was so exciting to welcome a new member of the family into our home. Uh, he, like I said, he fit, I think he's a wonderful fit. He has such a great personality. And we, were, we just couldn't have been happier. And it was a wonderful day to see all of Ron's work pay off with Cody because he's so well behaved. And we just really enjoyed him. When Cody got to our home, we were so excited, and I was, and um, I played with him all day, nonstop, and he was just such a great dog to have around. And I could see the dog was very happy every time I would bring him over there. And so he bonded with him. So the last day, I knew that it was all over with and the dog was found a new home. We're just so excited for Cody. Thankfully, Coach White being able to come in, really work with Cody, and now he's a completely different dog. He has been transformed, and I'm just so excited the Bush family is really now going to be his forever home, and he's going to make a great family dog. I've enjoyed pets all my life. In fact, today I have two cats, two dogs, an Arabian horse, and a miniature horse. It'd be terrible if I had allergies and couldn't be close to these beautiful creatures. But now there's good news for people with pet allergies, and it comes in a very huggable package. Take a look. the first thing you think of when you hear the word mutant? An ugly monster from a science fiction movie? Or a cute, cuddly creature with velvety fur and a great personality? That last kind of mutant is today's perfect pet. Cornish Rex cat is a cat that uh, originally came from a domestic cat, an ordinary barn cat. It's a mutation, uh, which means that it is distinct to itself, and if you don't breed a Cornish Rex to a Cornish Rex, you'll get a straight-coated cat. The distinctive features about the Cornish Rex is the fact that it has only one layer of coat. It also has a very distinct, long, whippy tail. Those characteristics make the Cornish Rex very unique. Although it's the wavy coat that gets the most double takes, Cornish Rex ears are also hard to overlook. They're large and deep as cat ears go. Set upon the sleek and slender Cornish Rex face, they're always striking and sometimes comical. There's three very specific health considerations you're going to want to remember when owning a Cornish Rex. The first are their ears. The elongation of the ear canal can make them prone to certain kind of ear problems, so you're going to want to get started on an ear cleaning protocol as young as you can in the cat's life. Another area of consideration is the skin. Because this is the result of a genetic mutation, it makes them prone to certain kinds of problems. And you're going to want to have the skin checked out early on in the cat's life so you can avoid certain dermatological problems like stud tail and other forms of problems that are related to nutrition. Sometimes if they don't have the proper diet, their hair coat may not develop properly. The last area of concern is their body temperature. These cats, 
because they are a genetic mutation, have a body temperature of about 102 normally, which is higher than normal. They're also exquisitely sensitive to changes in ambient temperature in the room. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a good climate control in your house when you have these cats around. Another unique quality of the Cornish Rex cat is the fact that it doesn't shed. Some people who usually have allergic reactions around cats find that they can tolerate the Cornish Rex. They may be the perfect cat if you have allergies. They only have one layer of coat and they don't shed at all as compared to the normal domestic short haired cat. And this makes it perfect in helping avoiding allergy problems that people often have in related to owning pets like cats and dogs. If you've never seen a Cornish Rex before, you might be surprised to learn that it's one of the most popular cat breeds in America. To find a cute curly kitten of your very own, check a cat magazine for a good breeder near you. Traveling with pets has been on the rise for many years, and today it's estimated that over 65% of Americans have their furry little friends accompany them on vacation from coast to coast. Today, Harley and I are here at the Royal Pacific Resort in Universal Orlando, which is one of the many pet-friendly hotels across the country. Now, I gotta be honest, not all pet-friendly hotels are created equal. Here, it's definitely first class all the way, but it's becoming much more common for hotels to offer pet amenities, specialized bedding, and guest services to make sure pets and their owners feel right at home. Let's go check it out. Oh, come on. How you doing? I Alex so. Boylan. Checking in? Yes. Now, it's best to check ahead with your destination, but it's becoming much more popular not to even need advanced reservations. It's also a good idea to check and see how many pets you're allowed to bring, as well as, is there a limit to how much your pet can weigh? And finally, ask about a pet fee. It can range anywhere from 200 all the way down to a small nominal fee. I think here it's like 25 bucks. There you go, Mr. Boylan, there's your key packet. Have a wonderful stay at the hotel. Have a Thank you. Day. All right. Come on, buddy. Hey, look at this, Harley. I mean, could you imagine needing anything else? Look at this Harley. He's got Frisbee, he's got some toys, little treats. His own bed's already set up there for him. There's a water bowl there for you, Harley. And take a look at this. A personalized note from the pet GM welcoming you here, huh? Well, Harley and I have been traveling, and I think he needs a little walk to stretch those legs. And it says right here that there's a park for, the, for you and some hiking trail. So I think it's time to get some exercise. What do you think, Harley, huh? All right. Let's go. Come on, honey, come on. Like you, your dog does not want to spend his entire vacation in the hotel room. So if they have a dog-friendly park on the premises, make sure to include your pet so it can mingle with the other four-legged guests. What do you say? Lunchtime, Harley? All right, buddy. Let's go. Now, one thing I suggest before you choose your pet-friendly hotel is to check out the room service menu, you know. Try to find one that has good nutrition, that helps deal with, you know, a dog's travel stress and altitude adjustments, stuff like that. Another thing is make sure it's been approved and developed by a licensed veterinarian. So, hey, Harley, what are you in the mood for? Come here, come here. We got the Bow Wow Burger, a little Chow Hound Tenderloin. What do you think? I think we'll take the Bow Wow Tenderloin. That's cool. Aloha, star service. Hello, you're welcome. Wow. I think this might be the nicest meal he's ever eaten. So as you can see, traveling with your pets has never been easier thanks to chains like the Lowe's Hotels. From check-in to check-out, everything to the very last detail has been taken care of to make sure you and your pet have the most comfortable stay. Just like people, dogs can get heat stroke too. It can happen if they're left in a hot environment without proper ventilation or without free access to water. Dogs can also get heat stroke from exercising too long, especially on a hot day. 
Some dogs don't really know when it's time to stop, so it's up to you to help them determine when enough's enough. Some of the symptoms that you may notice are excessive panting or a rapid heart rate, a change in gum color from the normal healthy pink to either a pale gray or a brick red color, or staggering around. This is an emergency. Even in the earliest stages, your dog is fighting for his life. Although all pets are susceptible to getting heat stroke, some dogs seem more prone. Specifically, short-nosed breeds like pugs and bulldogs, or heavy-coated breeds as well. What you can do is spray them with cool water, offer them ice cubes, or put a fan on them. But most importantly, make sure you get them to a vet. We've heard a lot of stories about people rescuing dogs, but not many about dogs rescuing people. Now, I don't mean saving people from danger. I'm talking about rescuing a person's spirit, their whole way of living. That's what this week's Pet Tale is really all about. Here, take a look. Meet Happy Girl, but she hasn't always been this happy. Her original owners couldn't handle her hyperactive behavior and abandoned her to the streets. Good catch, Happy! Good girl! Lucky for Happy, Lawrence Frederick changed all that. Happy was in pretty bad shape. She had kennel cough and she had heartworm so bad that uh, when we took her to the vet, they thought that she was going to expire on us. And it took a double dose of the alum, which is the treatment for heartworm, in order for us to get her back to health. It took about six months. So she was in pretty bad shape. Good catch, Happy. What? <laughs> Actually, all of my dogs have sort of rags to riches stories, and I guess the first dog that we want to talk about is Aerodynamic. Come on, here, get up. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Good girl. How are you? And Aero is a ten and a half year old Australian Shepherd. She's a three time Good national catch, champion, three time world finalist, and two different times Aero has been the number one dog in the entire world. Right? Good girl. Okay, go ahead and get down. All right, next I think um, probably uh, Flash, because Flash is without a doubt our most uh, entertaining and active and athletic dog on the team. And uh, our most recent rescue, who's pr predominantly one of our performers, is a dog named Harley Davidson. Seven homes in 17 months. It's an amazing story about this dog. And, and uh, to see him today after five months of training and working with him, is just, it's incredible to see the progress he's made. Actually, I'm, I'm a little different than most of the competitors in the world and trainers because I backed into the sport of frisbee dogs. I had a quite a, an excelled career in the human aspect of playing frisbee. A couple time world champion and touring around the world competing as a human in all the different human sports. And then um, I had a kind of a tragic accident and tore up uh, my knee pretty bad. And uh, I had toured with a guy and a dog a few years before and I said, well, let me give this a shot. And so I went out found myself a dog and, uh, and the rest history. Everybody loves to see the dogs play. And if I have any regret in my entire life is that I did not start playing with the dogs a lot sooner. I think it'd be hard for me to say that any single one of them is a favorite. Um, Arrow, I mean, you know, she's a three-time national champion. Most of the time she goes out there, dropless routines. And, and it's, she, she plays off of me and, and really makes up for the mistakes that I make out there. Happy Girl's a four-time world finalist. She is a Southeastern representative for the 2006 World Frisbee Dog Championships. And uh, Rags to Riches started out as a homeless dog on the streets and has never once, I think, met another dog or a person that she doesn't like. I think the thing about Flash is when she plays, you can see that there's nothing more in this dog's life that she loves more than playing Frisbee with me. She's the fastest and probably the most intelligent, and I think when it's all said and done with, she will be the best that I've ever played with. Harley, five, five months. The dog is without a doubt, um, probably if not the best athlete I have now, probably the second best, and he's gonna be incredible. For some dog that's only played five months, he's already out there in competitions and doing shows with us, and he was basically neglected. And you know, when, when you neglect them, um, you know, they go from being this kind of a dog who runs around all the time and jumps up on top of things and is always snatching everything they can get in their mouth 
It's a little difficult to have that dog live in an environment that's not conducive to those exercises, which in my house, that's a perfect dog. I think the thing that you find the most is these dogs have been on the other side of the tracks. They know how bad it is over there. And when they see what it can be like, and you know, and what I see what it can be like having these dogs in my life, it's a win-win situation for both of us. So I think that that's why I like, like having those uh, disconnected kind of dogs. All right, guys, it's time to eat breakfast. Let's go, come on, come on, come get your food. Let's go, come on, get your food. Hey, good girl, good girl. Lawrence has a real gift for taking the most unlikely dogs that nobody wants and turning them into world champs. One thing that I always try to tell people is don't ever go out and get a dog just to be a Frisbee dog. Don't get one that, well, I want one that'll be a world champion because that's not the right way to choose a dog. Always choose a canine companion as someone who will share your home with you. Because remember, you're only going to play Frisbee 10, 15, 20 minutes a day. The other 23 and a half hours plus out of the day, they're going to be your companion. Then also make sure that the dog's in proper condition. You know, they got a clean bill of health, get them to your vet. And if you're my age or older, you might want to go visit your own doctor and get a clean bill of health. And, uh, you know, just, just make sure that you feed them correctly and play in a very, very safe environment. I think that when people tell me, you know, it's really a great thing that you do about rescuing these dogs, um, I think the, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, I didn't rescue them. They kind of rescued me.